Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking With Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. I'm Dr. Brad Weenie. Okay, we've got a cool topic today. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, it's kind of hot off the medical press. I'm not sure why the media hasn't broken this story yet, but... Um, I think because it's drowned out by the noise from another medical story. <laughs> yeah, this was a great scientific journal article that we both read. What did you think of it? I think it was amazing, and uh, certainly the potential for the future is very exciting. Yeah, so the topic was MS. Yeah. Multiple sclerosis, yep. uh, which is a neurologic disease. Yeah, demyelinating disease that we don't really know much about. It's limited information as far as why you get it, how it progresses, how to diagnose it, and even how to treat it, unfortunately. Yeah, there's really no cure for it. No. Well, it turns out that MS is actually a type of infectious disease. Yeah, so there's an article in a, in a journal called Science, a very reputable journal, just this month that had a, a massive study, a 20-year study, where they looked at 10 million American military recruits mm -hmm. and followed them for 20 years. All of these military recruits at the beginning of their military career had given some blood samples to test for HIV. Yeah, mandatory, every two years. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah, so uh, they, t they kept those blood samples, and this group of researchers looked at it and looked for a virus called the Epstein-Barr virus. Right, so what do most people, most people wouldn't have heard of Epstein-Barr, but they might have heard of one of the famous diseases that it causes. It's the kissing disease, so. Mono. Paul would probably say he didn't get it in high school. He complained that high school was hard on him. But yeah, <laughs> mononucleosis or the kissing disease. I wasn't exposed. <laughs> because it was passed by saliva. And interestingly, Epstein-Barr virus is everywhere. They estimate that up to 95% of people actually have had some type of exposure. So if all of our blood is tested, 19 out of 20 of us would test positive for evidence of previous or active Epstein-Barr infection. Right, so now you're probably wondering, what do Epstein-Barr, mono, and MS have in common? Right, so what did they find, Paul? It turns out that just about everybody who they followed who developed MS, which occurs in about one in 10,000 of the time in this study, yep. everybody who got MS had the Epstein-Barr virus at some point in their life. Okay? Right. If you didn't have Epstein-Barr, you didn't get MS. Right. And even they had some studies where the blood test was originally negative and then they went through something called serial conversion where then your blood becomes positive. So the first sample was negative and then it became positive later on. And it was everyone except one of these. I yeah. think it was up to 900 people out of the 10 million had MS and one person hadn't and they weren't exactly, they didn't have a very good explanation yeah, for that one person. There was one person who uh, developed MS and didn't have Epstein-Barr virus. Right. Uh, however, uh, they think there may have been an error or they think that person may have actually had it and it wasn't picked up. So the vast majority of the time, if you, had, if you got MS, you had the Epstein-Barr virus. But it only goes in that direction. It doesn't go in the other direction. If you have Epstein-Barr virus, it doesn't mean you're going to get MS, but you can't get MS if you don't have the Epstein-Barr virus. That's right. So then people are going to be like, well, that really doesn't help us very much. If everybody has Epstein-Barr and a small percentage get MS, how does this help us? Okay, so it helps us in a couple of ways, a couple of very significant ways. Yes. One, um, we can guide treatment of MS knowing that its underlying cause is the Epstein-Barr virus. You've caught the virus when you were younger, it stays latent in your body and then comes out later and causes MS. So you can guide your treatment of MS now that you know the etiology or the cause of the MS. That's one, but the other way. Right, because a lot of the treatments now are more generalized treatments and then this way, if we can specifically tack with a specific antiviral for Epstein-Barr, that has a higher chance of being effective. But way more, I think way more exciting. Um, Unless you or, have MS, that's yeah, pretty e exciting. Equally exciting is the fact that you may be able to prevent it with a vaccine. If you could have a vaccine that could eliminate people from getting Epstein-Barr, it would, it would make sense then that we could maybe not eliminate, but you know, drastically reduce the incidence of multiple sclerosis, which is amazing. Like polio, right? Polio is yes. sort of a... Uh, infectious disease that has musculoskeletal implications, yep. right? a paralyzing disease similar to MS in that you have an infectious disease that causes musculoskeletal neurologic uh, things. We got rid of that with a vaccine. Yep. The polio virus is quite different from the Epstein-Barr virus. Polio virus comes in through the GI tract, Epstein-Barr through bodily fluids. Uh, but the same idea, if you vaccinate against it, you can eradicate it one it's, day. It's super exciting. And obviously the timeline from from what this article showed to a vaccine is, is even indeterminate, it's hard oh, to yeah, even know. Yeah. But, it, but it certainly is some promise in an area for a long time that didn't have much, so. I think
think some of the anti-vaxxers might uh, get nervous now or comment or uh, be upset, but. It's tricky, and that, well, I, to be honest, that would provide a study. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah, it would provide would. its own study, because you can't, even in this article, they mentioned how you can't really do a randomized controlled trial. It's just not practical. So this was the best way to have a massive number of people and they mm -hmm. compared them to people that didn't have the virus. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really, really exciting piece of literature. For yeah, sure. so you might be seeing that in the media soon in your popular media outlets starting to talk about uh, MS being an infectious disease. And you're gonna be in the know before all of your friends. Yeah, and infectious diseases really, haven't they had their time in the limelight over the last two <laughs> enough, years? Enough. Leave it to another branch How of medicine. How about orthopedic surgery? Come, Come on, on, give us some front page time. headlines. No, no, back to the infectious disease specialists. Now MS. There you go, but very exciting. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health. We'll see you next time.